What's up, guys? Ty here, and I'm here with my friend Jordan, and we're doing yeah, a video. You know who I am, guys. Like, honestly, if you've been on Ty's channel, it's because of me. <laughs> I don't... I, what does that mean? Okay, anyways, um, so I'm we and him decided to collaborate on something that we've been kind of looking forward to. Disgusting we're doing, YouTube videos. Uh, okay, we're, we're doing, we're going to do like a, basically a small series of videos, or not even a series, but like one-off episodes about this, just random things from the gaming industry or, you know, tech news from the week. We'll try to do this once a week. We'll put it under seven or eight minutes because no one wants to watch a 30-minute video of some guys talking about their dicks. So I'm going to start off this video with by talking about the uh, new Forza 5 microtransaction dilemma. Now, if you don't know what that is... Oh, yeah, yeah. X, I mean, uh, Jordan is definitely not an Xbox fanboy, but neither am I'm, I. It's not even like I'm not an Xbox fanboy. It's just I'm a, uh, not a fanboy of microtransactions on a game that I already paid $60 for. Like, if yeah. I'm playing a game of Candy Crush and it's free, and they ask me for microtransactions, or even like a game of League of Legends where you can buy skins on there, or even characters. Like, I guess it's a free game. It's initially free, but if you're going to make me pay $60, and then also ask me for micro transactions to initially like beat the game or be better at the game, then I kind of have a problem. Okay, yeah, because I, I agree entirely with you there. It's like, so if you don't know what it is, they're selling a uh, Lotus E21 or 25 or something like that for about 25 um, British dollars, which I guess mm -hmm. is like expensive, which was 30, probably about 35. 30, 35, 40 for us Americans. So. Yeah. They're basically making you pay forty dollars for a car that's in the game. You could you could literally grind for it, but it would take forever. It would take at least people have gamers have estimated like you know uh, about a hundred plus hours. So like you could grind for that, or you could pay a hundred dollars for like a super classy you know super race car. It's not like some crappy car you drive around. It's like one of those um, fancy Formula One cars. So the big dilemma 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 man dilemma. Nelly and Kelly Rowland would not be proud of me. Uh, nope. So the big dilemma with this is, this is the next generation. It's the new age of consoles, and the first thing they do is a slap on a sixty or a forty dollar microtransaction. That's like you just bought the game, and now you're buying another two thirds of a game to get one vehicle. And it's it's like why you know it's do we really want to start off this generation on foot? The the developers are really towing the line. They're hopping back forth back and forth between you know what's right and what the consumers will do they're just trying to push the consumers to see how far they can take it and if we let them you know push us too far they'll just rise like, up my brothers they'll just eventually destroy the pacing of all the games and you know you can just buy your way into it and if you if you're one of those people that say oh if you don't like it you know you should just buy it well even if i don't like it it'll affect me you know the yeah. uh you know the uh i, I was gonna make a hitler joke uh, that's horrible. That's terrible. You don't do that. I know. Um. So yeah, but like it'll affect you even if it, it, even if you don't, you know, do it. Like the same thing happened with Call of Duty. Even if you never bought any of the DLCs, they still churned out more DLCs. They had the season passes for like sixty bucks. I remember Call of Duty Elite or whatever for MW3. Yeah. I, not many people liked it, but they still did it. You know. But uh, but that's totally different when you think about it. Like a DLC is completely and utterly optionary, optional, but optionary, optional, and you don't need to buy the DLC to win the game. You can. I never bought a D. I haven't bought a DLC for Call of Duty in like two years. I bought the one DLC for Chaos Mode and Modern Warfare 3, and that was it. But what they're doing in this game is basically setting up a pay-to-win kind of game mode which is definitely not what you want to do i go back to league of legends because i think league of Le league of legends has pretty much mastered this by now like you can buy champions with real money but you can it's easy to grind your way up to get those champions with in-game currency like what you said with 100 plus game hours to get one car which i'm guessing i'm not a big xbox fanboy or a forza player or a racer in general Me neither. i'm guessing this one car as I'm guessing one of the best cars in the game. So when people, instead of sitting there, even even for the one, let's say there was no microtransaction at all, and you had to do 100 plus hours just to buy this game, if somebody with zero experience can just buy this game and just cream everybody who's been trying to grind for this car, it's really not that fair when you think about it. Right, and it's not only this game, it's, uh, Jordan, have you heard the game called Rise? 
Yeah. Like Birth of Spartan or whatever. Or the Xbox. Yeah, I think so. It, they're doing this thing too where online you can buy like bronze and like gold and silver packs where like your co-op char- or character. See, that's, my, that's just Microsoft. And that's yeah, it's just a microtransaction to get extra, you know, points to get an advantage on someone else. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, it's you know, it just kind of irks you, you know? No, it very irks you. Like, I think it's, it's, like I said, like we said, you're buying a game for $60 on a next generation console. It's $60, almost $100 of the month that I'm paying for this game, and then you're still asking me for more money. Like, you act like the, the game is like, or you act like you're not making enough money already. Like, a game like GTA V, where they spent three or four hundred million dollars, three or four hundred million dollars on this game, and they have yet to announce any kind of microtransactions or anything like that, and they still managed to gross one billion dollars. And you're telling me that a Forza 5 that I know did not spend nearly as much money and I'm, I obviously know we're backed by Microsoft and Rise was also backed by Microsoft hev- heavily and you're telling me that you're going to make me pay $60 and for microtransactions, like you're literally just money hogs at this point. Like it's a problem. Yeah, the only games where I think that's acceptable are free-to-play games. League of Legends, Farmville... Um, Candy Crush or whatever, because yep. they're free. You don't have to buy them. And so that's, that's literally in their marketing plan is to have micro. That's the, that's the only way to stay alive if you're a free to play game. Pretty much is yeah. microtransactions, which because is understandable. With those free to play games, you you're you don't you're not obligated to stay anymore. Like once you lose your fun, once you don't feel like grinding anymore, you can leave. You literally didn't put any money forward. You just put your time and effort. But however, yep. with these microtransactions for these uh you know triple A blockbuster. You know, bring down the house titles. You've yeah. already invested sixty dollars in it, so you kind of feel like you have to play it, even when you don't want to be emotionally attached to it because you know of these you know BS strategies. Any statements on this one? So we can move to the next one. You start. Um, no, I'm. I'm. That's basically it. That that was my tirade. My ending statement is: forget Microsoft because they're money hogs and Sony all the way. Unless, Hashtag. Until until Sony does something too. Then we can Has- say PC Master Race. Then we can say PC Master Race, but hashtag seamless straight into the next topic, which is, of course, fanboyism, which has been the biggest thing. Like, if any of you know what Reddit is or go on Reddit on a, on a near daily basis, you have definitely seen some kind of fanboyism, especially, especially it's all the gaming forums lately. And it's it's very, very apparent. And I think... Honestly, I can respect some kind of fanboys. I'm like, I get it. Like, you want to represent your kind of thing, even in the PC Master Race, which is the perfect place to be. There's fanboys in between the two, Microsoft and NVIDIA and Intel and all that stuff. But it's in their case, it's just seamless. Com- it's just competition. There's people that have Intel processors with AMD cards. It's nothing. But these people on are diehard Sony. Microsoft fans like I respect Microsoft as a company I respect that they have some better things they are doing better obviously the Xbox one came straight out the box and you and you can record straight out of the box with an Xbox one so I totally respect it I'm like all right that's definitely a one up to Microsoft but then I go on the Sony side and just like well they're just nicer people in general have better games and I just want to be in the Sony environment more so that's a one up for them in my part I don't know about you but I think that fanboyism is getting a little bit out of hand as of late. How about you, Ty? Uh, yeah, like, if I was on Modern War Negro's channel today, and he was doing a review on the PS4. And I the, saw that. And the Xbox One, and, like, the first 30 seconds, he's like, please don't start, a f- like, a flame war <laughs> in my comment section. And what do I see? A flame war in the comment section. It's, like, ridiculous. You know, that's a whole nother topic, the comment section. That, that's uh, a whole Lord nother. G- Lord Jesus, that's, uh, yeah, it's, that we'll save that for nother. Sunday. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, like, is- it's like, I mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, everyone wants to belong to a big club. So they say, oh, I want to belong to the Xbox One club. And then, of course, the other camp pulls up and say, oh, I want to join the PS4 club. It's it's basically mini politics. You think it's about it. Politics. Like one of them is the Republics and one, or the Republican and one of them is dem- the Democrat. Which one that is, that's up for you to decide. You know, who's more liberal, who's more conservative? Dude, the funnest part of the fanboy um, fanboy thing was everybody knows that the PS4 got released before the Xbox One. And Xbox fanboys were literally going in on people because, or, or were going in on the Sony fanboys because 
the some of the Sony consoles, of course, with any console, big console release, some of your stuff is going to be D uh, D O A, Dead Upon Arrival. Yeah, Dead on Arrival. Yeah. So I mean, and of course it happened to both sides. But I'm since the PS4 came up first, Microsoft fanboys were going crazy over that. They were like, "See, your console's totally imperfect. Came straight into the box and it didn't even work. Like and then four hundred dollars. And then of the course Xbox two weeks like, yeah, two or two or a week later or whatever, the Xbox comes out. And of course the same exact problem happens. Like I feel like. People are just waiting to pounce on something, just just to have the tiniest slight advantage to argue for their own console. I'm just like, it's so stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares? PC Masteries. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's wrap up this topic. My last um, comment to say is that if history is to show anything, I think PS4 are eventually going to win out of this because um, in the last generation, uh, Xbox definitely k- comes out of the skate. You know, it's just like... Bam, bam, bam! Launch titles galore. But in the end, PS4 usually tends to have you know better developers, better Hashtag publishers. the Last of Us. Yeah, that that's my point exactly. You know, like Xbox just kept regurgitating series over like um, Hashtag like Call of Duty. Like hey, well, I mean, there was both consoles, like console exclusive titles, like Halo, okay. the Halo series. You know, they just oh regurgitated they episodes of that. Yeah, and but while you know. Um, what was I gonna say? PS4, I mean PS3, they had a, they regurgitated some titles too, but they were like you know, really nice ones like um, Uncharted. Oh, my, I love Uncharted. Uncharted Killzone. Like, kills. Well, Killzone's kind of dying off. Infamous is a Infamous, Infamous is a good, is one. A good one. And you can tell by the like you know the late launch cycle of The Last of Us, like mm-hmm. that came out of left field. It was a great game, and it was just like. You think Sony would keep them in their cards for the PS4, but they're like, nope, we still care about Personally, this system. I would have. I like. I'm not saying it was a dumb thing, and I hope that Naughty. I, was it Naughty Dog that made the I Last think, of Us? I think it was Naughty Dog. It looked like. I hope Uncharted. that they make a Super HD version for the PS4. Or because... at least, yeah, I just hope that when they make their sequel, because I want a sequel, and if not yeah. like a DLC, I want it to be. It'll on be a sequel. PS4. They'll definitely make a sequel. That thing. I, did you see the VGA uh, listing? I'm pretty sure it's Game of the Year. Yeah. Nomination. It's probably gonna be Goaty. So, uh, any last words about fanboyism? Uh, fanboyism is stupid, uh, and we should just stop it because it's useless bantering over the internet slash in real life, and it's just a waste of my time. Yay! Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we're probably gonna have to come up with a title for this. I'm kind of going for the swag off. But uh, you can go for anything you want. Um, we'll... I'm not. Well, you're stupid. Okay, we're going to make another <laughs> video soon. So, hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, leave a like, comment your comments, like your likes, uh, favorite your grandpas, and thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.